evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, June 14th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading defamatory or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to all those who are joining us via the YouTube channels. Welcome to councillors, staff and delegations who will participate in this meeting. I invite your decorum over the course of the meeting. I advise that I have attendance regrets tonight from Deputy Mayor Doug Kellum. CAO Snell is also taking some well-deserved vacation this week. Council, I'm going to stand for a moment in the chamber. Tonight it is certainly with sorrow that I announce our, to our community the death of long-serving elected official Meredith Merck Schneider. Mert died on Sunday, June 13th. Mert was born and raised in Wallace Township and was a self-employed farmer on lands in Wallace for 55 years. He began his career in municipal politics in 1980 when I was in grade 10. He believed firmly in political progression and served as Deputy Reeve of Wallace Township from 1985 to 1987, then Reeve from 1988 to 1997. Upon the amalgamation that created North Perth, he stepped up to serve as councillor and did so from 1998 to 2018. Mert was given a special award for long-standing service in municipal government in Ontario in 2006, and he got another 12 years after that. Truly, he's one of the longest stints in municipal politics that I have personally ever heard of. During his service as an elected official, Mert served in a variety of committees, including the North Perth Planning Advisory Committee, Municipal Drainage Committee, North Perth Court of Revision, Blue Water Recycling Association, and the Wallace Recreation Committee. Mert also served as a representative of North Perth on Perth Council and as warden of Perth County in 2016. Mert Schneider found time to be involved in a number of community causes, including memberships in Perth County Cattlemen Association, the Palmerston Agricultural Society, and the former Wallace Optimist Club. I did not serve alongside Mert and knew him only extremely casually. Several councillors at this table knew him far better than me. I know that he had a passion for North Perth and that he enjoyed his service with and for North Perth and missed it the last few years. I will remember him being called into service to drive the warden of in a local parade and his wide smile when I greeted him as he undertook that simple service for his longtime friend and colleague, Walter McKenzie. He had a commitment to support the traditions and dignity of our political offices and councillors. As a consequence of that tonight, I have put on the chain, which I don't always wear, as a tribute to Mert Schneider. On behalf of council, I express sympathies to his wife, Nancy, his children, Angela, Jason, Paul, and Daryl, and to his nine grandchildren. I call now councillors, colleagues, for a moment of reflection and, and of gratitude for a life well-lived and well-served. Meredith Mert Schneider.
Thank you, Council. Thank you, staff. All those who participated, I appreciate it. it was not to serve law. <laughs> All right. Um, but bless him. Let us move to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. Um, for the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing already, to verbally the chair in public session and to submit documentation, if not already done, to the Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare an act at any point in the meeting. Tonight, I've had one advance uh, notice uh, from Councillor Andreessen. Welcome to Council tonight. Councillor Andreessen, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and thank you for that fine tribute to um, um, our former Councillor Mert Schneider. Uh, tonight, I am declaring a pecuniary interest on items 7.1 and 7.2. I am a director with the Lisle Agricultural Society. These two items pertain to a street closure request and a signage request from the Lisle Society. Consequently, I'll also declare on 13.1 um, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Are there any others who wish to make a declaration at this time? Okay, hearing and seeing none, let's move forward. To explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us tonight. I'll do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish, to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their term, on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the speaking list. This is a normal process consistent with Rod's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you're not audible, I will let you know, I'll call on you. Um, councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in our voting software eScribe, I will call on you when things do seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, and then return to mute. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda of tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Can I call, let's start tonight with Councillor Duncan. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to serve as our mover for this? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you, and uh, can I call on, on Councillor Johnston to be our seconder? I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this item? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you very much. That brings us to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require council's recognition and, and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate and individual action may do so. There are nine items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? And if you do, we'll let the clerk know. Councillor Anstead first, please. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yes, I just wanted to speak uh, briefly on item 3.7. 
I was uh, pleased to see it in the consent agenda this evening, and I'm just wondering if it's going to be discussed in more detail at a further uh, council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anstett, for that one. I think uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll extract that one. Um, it seems of importance. Uh, any further? Councillor Rothwell next. Yes, thanks, uh, Mayor Todd. Uh, I as well wanted to, to have uh, 3.7, so thanks, uh, Councillor Anstett. Uh, as well, I just wanted to uh, extract uh, course uh, 3.8 correspondence from John Pronk and uh, as to what our response will be. Thank you. Thank you. So let's pull that one as well and uh, gives us an opportunity to consider approach to response. Uh, do we have anyone further? Okay, so Treasurer Hale is not with us. Um, Councillors, anyone have uh, further items they'd like to extract or discuss? I, um, I would like uh, personally to sort of ask us to consider extracting item 3.6, um, a motion that pertains to LPAT to the province uh, that came from another jurisdiction. Um, I think we should have a discussion briefly about that one as well. Anything else? Okay, so um, I think maybe what we should do is hold off accepting the consent agenda until we've had our discussions, just for the sake of keeping it neat and tidy. And uh, we can proceed with uh, the items that have been called out for extraction. Uh, since uh, Councillor Anstett uh, began with 3.7, why don't we call on you, Councillor Anstett, to uh, to initiate a few comments about this one and, and then we can decide how to proceed. Thank you very much, Mayor Kaysenberg, and through you, um, yes, I'm happy to speak on this. I've had several uh, community members reach out to me regarding this. Um, I'm sure the rest of council is aware that this is a very important issue. And in addition to that, we've had many municipalities and cities across the country that have been involved in promoting this organization's Pride Days and Pride Months. So I'm asking here tonight if we can have a discussion about this and if we can support not only this, um, this request from this resident about the fundraising event that she's having, but also if we can have a broader discussion about what types of things we can do for June 2022, which is Pride Month. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. Um, I found myself in uh, reviewing the, the letter from... Uh, our constituent uh, thinking that perhaps uh, we should uh, request a report of staff uh, for the purposes of understanding uh, sort of where, what we can do and and um, where there might be some policies where we'll have to intervene as a council. Um, I believe that we would have to intervene on the flag policy um, and council will need to decide whether it wishes to act there. So um, I'll, I'll suggest that perhaps that's how we focus our attention on this matter, is to ask staff for a report uh, that collates all the op possible opportunities for uh, support and, and addresses the, uh, the issues in that letter. Um, anyone else have suggestions uh, on this one or want to speak to it at this point? Okay, so Councillor Anstead, you okay with that idea of, of just sort of letting staff in on this one for a little bit and uh, do some homework for us so that we have something to, that will support a fulsome discussion at a future date? Yes, I think that's reasonable. And if we get the staff report, we can have a more wholesome discussion at that point. Thank you. Great. Okay, so um, I, I'll give you the honor then. Uh, if you'll, uh, will you serve as mover for that then, uh, Councillor Anstead? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And... Um, Councillor Barons, would you serve a seconder for that? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we have a motion on the floor then pertaining to item 3.7 specifically, uh, which I think everyone understands the general um, nature of a referral to staff for a report, and looking at ways and means that uh, this council can be supportive of the requests made by the, the, the constituent who represents obviously a group. Um, any discussion or debate on this motion? All right, here's hoping uh, Deputy Clerk Beer. So let's see where we are. Let's have a vote. Uh, 
And that is unanimously carried. Thank you, Councillor Anstead, for drawing that to our attention. Uh, next up is item 3.8. Uh, Councillor Rothwell, you asked for this one to, ex to be extracted. Did you want to offer some further comment or questions or suggest a course of action? Thanks, Mayor Todd. My suggestion is that uh, we request uh, staff to produce a report for us uh, outlining uh, a draft uh, response uh, uh, to uh, Mr. Pronk uh, and his uh, request uh, for information as well as uh, a response. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Um, does anyone wish to propose any alternative course of action or additional course of action before we consider uh, crafting a resolution for that? Okay, so I think our resolution, sorry. Mr. Barnes. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I did uh, reach out and connect with uh, Mr. Pronk, um, unfortunately, doing, due to the timing and the uh, weekend events, we were unable to connect. I s simply wonder if it wouldn't be a more appropriate instead of doing a report to simply make sure or ensure that someone from the office contacts Mr. Pronk. Um, I will try to connect with him later in the week, but I think it's imperative that someone from the office connect with him and have a brief discussion, whether it's you, Mayor Kaysenberg, or perhaps uh, Francis Hale or uh, CAO Snell. I think that would be more appropriate. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rothwell, you, you proposed a different course of action. Did, you've heard Councillor Barron's um, suggestion. Do you, how are you feeling about that? Uh, I think that's uh, totally a, uh, is appropriate to, to do so. And if staff uh, uh, could uh, have that conversation, and if there are other issues, then they can let, certainly let us know. But I certainly believe the uh, conversation with either uh, uh, CAO Snell or Director of Finance, uh, Treasurer, uh, Francis Hale could could do so. I think that uh, could address the issue. Thank you. Thank you. So um, unless there's yet another course of action, then I think uh, we should chase the course of action that's been proposed by Councillor Barons, which is to uh, direct the corporation, um, either the CEO or the director of finance or both, and they can avail themselves to the mayor as necessary to have a conversation with this constituent to discuss uh, his concerns about uh, uh, property taxes. Uh, does that sound like an acceptable resolution? Okay, uh, Councillor Behrens, uh, um, actually, <laughs> I'll let you move or second the last one, so maybe I'll move down. Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as the mover of that one? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Councillor Richardson, will you be our seconder for that one? I will second that, thank you. All right, thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Okay, uh, seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Um, Council, you'll take note that I asked uh, to extract item uh, 3.6. Uh, this one is a, a letter from uh, the uh, uh, town of Halton Hills, I should actually know that one, um, asking the province for some remedy with regards to LPAT. I think there's concerns that LPAT's refocusing uh, during this term of government has been counterproductive to, um, to land planning matters in many respects, and uh, there's a request uh, not only, I think, to refocus, it, but some suggestion that, in fact, the province may wish to consider um, uh, deleting it, removing it from from its role. Um, so I I read that letter with a certain degree of interest and fascination, and found myself sympathetic to that cause, which is why I asked for this one to be extracted. I think it would be not a terrible thing for uh, for us as a council to express our concerns about LPAT and just endorse that letter and send a letter of endorsement to uh, the province of the officials named in that resolution from Halton Hills. Um, 
certainly be open to other comments, though I know that we have at least one expert on planning in the midst, and um, and so happy to hear from other councillors at this point in time. Anyone going to speak at this on this one? So I think the resolution would read that this council uh, sends a letter of support uh, to the, the province of Ontario, uh, the named officials in the, the uh, resolution from the town of Alton Hills, um, expressing support for the position of the town of Alton Hills and, um, and committing the province to uh, take appropriate actions. Does that sound about right, Pat? Seem a reasonable resolution for that purpose. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you, uh, Councillor Siler. Would you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any discussion or debate on that one? We see anything, Pat? Okay, everyone's quiet on this one. All right, uh, then let's have a vote on it. So that's carried, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. And uh, so now let's turn to the whole of the consent agenda. Okay, resolution for the purposes of that, that reads that consent items 3.1 to 3.9 be received for information and the minutes of the June 7th, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on the consent agenda? Seeing no indication of that, let's have that vote. Okay, we're missing one. Councilor My Rick. vote didn't come up, uh, Mayor Todd, I'm in favor. Okay, thank you. So with that vote, uh, that is carried. Thank you very much. That allows us to move forward to item four on our agenda. This evening, we do have the opportunity to conduct a public meeting related to land planning and use matters to facilitate the public meeting. We must temporarily adjourn from our regular council meeting. I have before me the appropriate motion to make that happen. It reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.23 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the following. An application for a proposed Listowel Ward Official Plan Amendment and proposed Zoning Bylaw Amendment by HAE Listowel Inc. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this? I will move that. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our second? Second the motion, yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. That means that this regular council meeting is temporarily adjourned. So let me pull out the paperwork for this one. Uh, Council, welcome, and, and those who are visiting with us, welcome to a public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for a proposed amendment to the List to Award Official Plan and the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. I'm glad that all of you who, who are here for this meeting have joined us. We appreciate it. We appreciate you getting through with the technology that um, is available for these meetings. We know at times that can feel like a bit of a challenge. The purpose of this public meeting, this is a statutory public meeting pursuant to the Ontario Planning Act to deal with an application for an amendment to the List to Award Official Plan and the North Perth Zoning Bylaw submitted by HAE List Inc. 
as owner of a subject property. Correspondence, reports, and comments received for this application will be considered by a council. Those in attendance wishing to make any comment concerning this application will be given an opportunity to do so. Anyone wishing to appeal either the Perth County Council or North Perth Council decision must make verbal submission during this public meeting or have made a written submission to, to uh, both Perth County and the Municipality of North Perth. Those who want to receive notice of the municipality's decision concerning this application are asked to identify uh, through uh, email or other means providing their mailing address name and uh, telephone number. At this time, my pleasure to uh, call on uh, our planner, uh, the planner working for Perth County, but uh, uh, dedicated to North Perth, uh, Mr. Sean Yilmaz, who will give us a summary of this application and uh, amendment request. Uh, Mr. Yilmaz, welcome tonight. Thank you, uh, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of Council. Uh, Argoloff Engineering and Development Incorporated, on behalf of the property owner, has applied to amend the List Stool Ward official plan and the North Perth Zoning Bylaw to permit the establishment of a three-story mixed-use multi-unit building containing 20 residential units and four commercial units with a combined gross floor area of approximately 400 square meters or 4,300 square feet. The subject property is a vacant commercial lot located on the south side of Main Street East, just west of Tremaine Avenue. The subject lands are surrounded by a mix of uses, including commercial uses, institutional uses, and residential uses. The subject property abuts a KFC restaurant on the east side of the site, a vacant portion of an automobile dealership on the south side of the site, a single detached residential dwelling on the west side of the site, and the Salvation Army Listool Citadel is located north of the property across Main Street East. Um, the parcel has 56 meters of public road frontage, or 184 feet, and a total lot area of approximately 2,820 square meters, or 0 0.69 acres. The subject property is within the highway commercial designation of the Lestua Ward official plan and is within the highway commercial uh, zone or the C3 zone of the Lestua, Lestua, excuse me, of the North Per zoning bylaw. This designation and zone permit uses which are commonly larger scale retail and automobile oriented commercial uses. Residential uses are not permitted within this designation and zone. As such, amendments are required to permit the proposed use. Uh, as both applications um, for an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment were submitted concurrently, staff have elected to host both statutory public meetings pursuant to the Ontario Pl Planning Act jointly. At this time, I, I do think it's important to note that staff cannot currently support the application and is recommending that council defer a decision. While there are a number of outstanding issues that need to be addressed as discussed in the staff report. Due to the nature of the development, staff felt it was prudent to present the application to council and the members of the public, hear comments and feedback, and to address any outstanding matters that are generated from this forum, while concurrently addressing the outstanding policy and technical matters that I will speak to. The subject property is currently vacant. However, the property was previously a car dealership, a tire shop, and a gas station, as indicated in the application as a result of these previous land uses and the potential contamination of the site, a record of site condition is required and was noted as prepared and submitted to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks as confirmed through the notice of receipt of record of site condition, which was dated February 17th, 2021. Final acknowledgement, however, confirming the results of the record of site condition was not received by planning staff uh, and following a discussion with ministry staff, it is, the it is our understanding that the stage one report uh, for the record of site condition is still under review. Section 3.2.2 of the provincial policy statement speaks to sites with contaminants and the requirement for assessment and remediation prior to any activity on the site associated with the proposed use such that there will be no adverse effects. Decisions on official plan amendments and zoning bylaw amendment applications are required to be consistent with the provincial policy statement. 
as the status of the record of site condition is unknown, the proposed official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment are therefore not consistent with the PPS at this time. Prior to a staff recommendation to support the proposed amendments, the status of the subject lands will need to be verified and confirmation that the site contains no contaminants. As noted, uh, the, prop the subject property is within the highway commercial designation of the, Le the Listua Ward official plan and is within the highway commercial zone of the North per zoning bylaw. Commercial uses are permitted, whereas residential uses are not permitted within this designation and zone. Now, the blend of commercial and residential uses within the same building is commonly referred to as a mixed-use development. The North Perth Zoning Bylaw defines mixed-use building as a form of development in which the building contains both residential and non-residential uses. To permit the proposed three-story mixed-use development, an official plan amendment is required to redesignate the subject land from the highway commercial designation to the central commercial designation with a special provision. Uh, and an associated zoning bylaw amendment is also required to rezone the land from the highway commercial zone to an appropriate zone to permit a mix of commercial and residential uses. Staff have suggested that the lands be placed in the special area commercial zone with site-specific provisions capturing the proposed development. This will effectively Permit the, the mixed use development with 400 square meters dedicated for commercial uses and 20 residential units within the balance of the building. This includes four units on floor one and eight units each on the second and third floors. The subject property is located within the Listua Ward urban serviced area, which is an urban settlement er, uh, area with municipal water and wastewater services uh, and include a variety and mix of uses. The general location is considered appropriate for a higher density development. The 400 square meters of non-residential space will maintain a commercial supply on the site, which effectively pr preserves the commercial component on these lands. The surrounding uses, as noted previously, offer a unique opportunity for the site to accommodate a blend of non-residential and residential uses within the building and complement the variety of residential and non-residential uses that exist in the area. The resulting uses in built form will also contribute to the transition between highway commercial uses to the east and the residential and institutional uses to the west and north. Section 1.1.6 of the provincial policy statement states that growth and development should be directed to areas with municipal, municipal sewage and municipal water services. A preliminary stormwater management and servicing report was submitted with the application and reviewed by municipal staff. The reporting was noted to contain missing or incomplete information and subsequent correspondence was communicated with the applicant. At this time, staff have not received confirmation if these concerns have been adequately addressed. However, discussions are ongoing to this regard. Uh, OPA 33 will redesignate the property to the central commercial designation of the Listua Ward official plan. This designation provides that the primary use of land shall be all forms of retail and service commercial facilities, businesses or professional offices, hotels, eating establishments and places of worship. In addition, new residential uses are permitted provided they are located in the upper stories. This designation has historically been implemented in the downtown core area of Listool and Atwood. Uh, a large portion of Main Street in Listool currently contains lands within this designation, and staff feel that the policies of the central commercial designation are appropriate based on the character of the neighborhood and are appropriate for the proposed mixed-use development. OPA 33 would also include a site-specific amendment allowing residential uses on all upper floor levels and the rear portion of the ground floor level. The commercial or non-residential uses will remain fronting the public road um, and maintain the commercial facade of the ground floor of the building. Additionally, the proposed ground floor commercial uses will shift away from highway commercial type uses to uses more consistent with the downtown commercial land uses and that are typically pedestrian oriented. This will be captured through a site specific zoning of the property. These uses include retail stores, medical offices, banks and goods and personal services. To implement 
uses, the proposed amendment removes the land from the highway commercial zone and places it within the special commercial zone or, or the C5 zone. Um, the site-specific C5-5 would capture site-specific uses, regulations, provisions permitting the mixed-use development consisting of both commercial and residential uses within a mixed-use building. The site-specific special area commercial zone prepared in consultation with the applicant includes items such as permitted uses, site requirements such as frontage, lot area requirements, uh, the permitted density, amenity space requirements, and parking requirements. The list dual ward official plan suggests that low-rise apartments should maintain a net density between 40 and 75 units per hectare. The subject property is approximately 0 0.28 hectares, uh, suggesting an appropriate number of units of, for this site should be between 11.2 and 21 units. The proposed, this pro proposed mixed use development includes a maximum of 20 residential units and approximately 400 square meters of commercial space, uh, which is considered to be a high dense development. The site specific zoning would limit the number of dwellings and would require commercial space be main maintained on the street facing ground level. The proposed development includes 30 parking spaces. This would accommodate one space per unit, so that's 20 spaces for 20 units, and 10 additional spaces. These spaces would be available for both visitor use and for the, use, the users of the non-residential uses. As noted in the staff report, staff feel that more attention and justification is needed with regard to the on-site parking. The proposed amendment includes a refined permitted uses list with some of the normally permitted uses that typically generate higher levels of automobile traffic removed. However, staff feel that the proposed list should have further consideration and justification. Uh, additionally, the zoning bylaw amendment is proposing a building footprint with a minimum front yard setback of six meters or 20 feet. The site specific zone would also include a maximum setback of eight meters or 26 feet. The highway commercial zone normally requires 10.5 meters um, whereas the downtown commercial zone requires 4.5 meters. Uh, the six meters as proposed in this application is an appropriate distance as it maintains a safe distance from the public road, that is Main Street, but also maintains a setback that will create a pedestrian oriented space. Main Street East is a well-traveled road and designated as an arterial road as per Schedule B roads plan of the list to award official plan. This location is an unofficial gateway into Listowel from the east via Perth Line 86. A gateway, sometimes referred to as an entrance, can be described as an area with elements intended to assist the traveling public in finding their way and in doing so contributing to a sense of identity of a community. Though the Stool Ward official plan does not define nor designate areas as gateways, nor do guiding policies exist regarding development in areas that are potential gateways into urban areas. Staff, however, felt it was important to identify this locational feature and encourage the property owner to consider the significance of this location with the building design. Gateways commonly incorporate designs that somehow reflect elements of the local culture, natural landscape, built form, or community history, helping to define, define community boundaries. Staff is of the opinion that the design of the building, that is the aesthetic features, should contribute to the built form. Staff is also of the opinion that the final approval of the building design should be made by this council. The zoning bylaw, um, excuse me, the bylaw includes proposed text that regulates the street facing facade, as well as the design features that will enhance the building and contribute to the mixed use pedestrian oriented features of the site. However, staff is of the opinion that the bylaw is still in draft form. At this time, staff cannot support the application without final confirmation regarding a number of outstanding issues, notably the record of site condition, the potential for the subject lands to be contaminated without the appropriate remedial efforts in place effectively deems this application premature. Staff is aware of correspondence received by members of the public. Uh, we have not had time to fully digest these, these letters. However, understand that there may be some conformity issues with 
area industries and the provincial policy statement, staff will most certainly review these comments uh, and address them appropriately. As such, staff is recommending council defer the application for both the official plan amendment and the zoning bylaw amendment. Um, I would also like to suggest council may want to include a requirement for another public meeting. Um, I did not include this in my recommendation, but, but do feel it may be appropriate to include. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yilmaz, very comprehensive. Um, at this time, um, I'd like to just redirect to you again, uh, Sean, to give us uh, information about the notice of public meeting details that have been provided. Yeah, so the notice was sent out to um, all property owners within 120 meters of the site um, and posted on the website as well as posted at the property. Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll turn to um, our clerk and, uh, and if necessary, the planner, uh, looking for information on correspondence, comments, and reports that have been received to date with this application. I think we'll start with the clerk. Just give me a second to set up my AV so that we don't create the black hole. Council, I have been in receipt of two pieces of correspondence in regards to tonight's public meeting. Due to the fact that I have only been in receipt of them today, therefore forwarding, forwarding them to Council, I feel it appropriate to read them aloud. Both the authors have been invited to attend the public meeting, but are unable to attend. So there will be further, no further comment from them. The first one is um, written to myself, Mayor Kaseberg, and the members of Council. This letter is to submit our objection to the current proposed zoning bylaw as submitted by Argoloff Engineering and Development, Inc. on behalf of the property owner, Hay Listral, Inc. Our concerns with respect to the proposed development are as follows. Parking. The development as currently proposed consists of 20 residential one-bedroom apartment condo units plus four commercial units of unknown use. The developer proposes one parking space per residential commercial unit, two wheelchair accessible parking spaces, and six visitor parking spaces. The six visitor parking spaces would be shared between visitors of the residential units, staff, assuming staff requirements of more than one staff member per commercial unit, and customers to the four commercial properties. There appears to be no plan for residents that may have more than one vehicle. There is no on-street street parking available on this section of Main Street, and there are no public parking lots available in the vicinity of the proposed development. The closest street to the proposed development is Elm Avenue North. We regularly have people block part of our driveways when utilizing the on-street parking on Elm Avenue, as well as parking on our lawn. We are concerned that this will increase with the new development if there's inadequate parking provided. Also, we have con have, are concerned that visitors, customers attending the proposed development will not have appropriate room to turn around in the parking lot area in the event that all spots are being utilized. This would in turn have people backing onto Main Street. If the proposed development were to be approved, we request that more parking be required in the development and or decrease the size scope of the development so that there are appropriate number of available parking spaces. We also request that it be designed so that vehicles do not need to back onto Main Street in the event that all the parking spaces are utilized. Since we've moved into our home on Elm Avenue North in Listowel, being six months ago, we have seen the sewer lines being cleaned out several times. We have informed, we were informed by the municipality that this is due to the KFC and ongoing sewer issues. We have been informed by neighbors that this is an ongoing issue with increasing frequency required for cleanouts. This cleaning has been caused by sewage to back up into our basement through floor drains. We have also spoken to neighbors who advise that the drain cleaning causes their toilet to gurgle and overflow. We also have had very bad water pressure in this area of Elm Avenue and all water stops in the rest of the house when the wash machine is filling. The water runs off drains on the one side of Elm Street, also overflows after winter and during heavy rainfall and causes flooding on the street, sidewalk and lawns. 
We are concerned that the addition of the 20 residential units and the four com commercial units will cause undue stress on an already taxed water and sewer system. If the proposed development were to be approved, we would request that it is on a smaller scale, less units, or it is contingent on the appropriate upgrades to the area's water, sewer, and drain systems, systems so that they can properly support the increase in usage. We also support any cost of same be borne by the developer. In regards to traffic, despite the assertions that this is more pedestrian oriented development, the, local, the location is at least a 10 minute walk away from some similar retail locations, the closest one being Giant Tiger. I feel that it is unlikely that people shopping in the downtown core would then walk 10 minutes away to shop at these four commercial locations. I find it more likely patrons would travel specific to these locations and likely would do so by vehicle. In this case, it is believed that there would be an increase of traffic in an area that already has consistent traffic, being one of the two main streets in town. This should be taken into account when determining the size and parking. Setbacks, given the location and depending on the businesses that set, shop, set up shop, this would be a perfect location for high school students to attend during lunch. During uh, and after school. Safety of the students who may loiter or fool around in the front of the stores should be a factor considered when determining setback requirements from the roadway. It should also be taken into consideration when determining spacing between this development and neighboring residential properties to ensure it is not creating a disturbance, as well as in the design of the units within the development. In regards to design, the proposed development is at a at the very entry of Listowel, this area is not traveled. This is area is uh, is traveled not only by residents of the area, but also travelers passing through the community, whether to attend Lake Huron or other areas. The proposed development would give visitors the, our a first impression of our town. As proposed, the development is quite unpleasant to look at. It appears to be quite out of date with current design trends, and we believe it would be an eyesore for anyone traveling into the area. The proposed three-story building is also larger and taller than all neighboring properties. A smaller building, which would thereby allow more suitable property parking, such as a two-story, three-unit wide building, would be preferred and would fit better into the neighboring properties. The design also has the location of the garbage at the entry of the parking lot. This would be the first thing customers would see when driving into the parking lot. It would also be able to be seen by all travelers on Main Street and those traveling down Elm Avenue North. As seen in other department complexes in the area, these garbage bins are regularly overflowing and very unsightly. We would ask the council to make any proposed development subject to design approval by council. We would also ask the council to ensure they keep in mind that this building would be the first impression to anyone traveling into the area from Highway 86, and this area is frequently traveled. It should be both enhance the neighborhood while fitting in with the size and height of neighboring properies. We also ask that the garbage bin be relocated and hidden in a way that they would not be seen by the commercial customers or travelers on Main Street or Alum Avenue. We would like to thank Council for considering our objections when making any decisions with respect to this zoning bylaw amendment and any further issues raised with respect to the property. We would also appreciate being kept advised of any new developments. And this correspondence is signed by Nicole Greenan and Alec Recknick, who both live on Elm Avenue North Listwell. The second piece of correspondence comes from Lavarge, uh, business in the area, addressed to myself, but thank you for providing us with the notice of the above noted application for a proposed three-story mixed use development located at 670 Main Street East Listwell. Lafarge Canada Inc. is the owner of the lands located at 230 Tremaine Avenue South to the southeast of the proposed mixed development. We operate a concrete ready mix plant with outdoor storage. We understand that a 
1.3 hectare portion of the property fronting onto Main Street is proposed to be zoned to permit a three-story mixed-use development that would include two stories of residential condo units as well as four units of on-ground floor commercial. Parking is proposed to be located along the south, the back side of the building. The Lafarge property is zoned M2, general industrial zone, is in is in the municipality of North Perth, do, as in the municipality of North Perth zoning bylaw and designated industrial in the County of Perth official plan. The proposed development application would introduce a new sensitive use in close proximity, approximately 60 meters, to an existing and established industrial use. We have reviewed the property's planning justification and rationale report provided by Argonoff Engineering and Development, as well as the June 14, 2021 Staff Council Report. We understand that staff are recommending deferral on the decision on the application pending further review and design considerations. Based on our review of the application materials, it is not clear how land use compatibility has been addressed in the terms of allowing new residential use in close proximity to existing industrial uses. The proposed planning applications should properly assess land use compatibility to ensure consistencies with sections 1.2.61 and 1.2.62 of the Provincial Policy Statement, as well as the conformity with sections 6.410 of the County Official Plan. The first section being 1.2.61 of the PPS deals with major, major facilities and sensitive land uses shall be planned and developed to avoid or, if avoidance is not possible, minimize and mitigate any potential adverse effects from odor, noise, or other contaminants, minimize risk to public health and safety, and ensure the long-term operational and economic visibility of major facilities in accordance with provincial guidelines, standards, and procedures. Section 1.2.62 of the PPS deals with where avoidance is not possible in accordance with policy. Planning authorities shall protect the long-term viability of existing and planned industrial, manufacturer, or other uses that are vulnerable to encroachment by ensuring that the planning development proposed adjacent sensitive land uses are only permitted if the following are demonstrated in, in accordance with provincial guidelines, standards, and procedures. Number one, that there is an identified need for the proposed use. There are alternate locations for the proposed use have been evaluated and that there are no reasonable alternate locations. Adverse effects to the proposed sense of land use are minimized and mitigated and potential impacts to industrial manufacturing and other uses are minimized and mitigated. In regards to the County of Perth official plan section 6.4, 10.1, where lands adjacent to the industrial uses are proposed to be developed or redeveloped, with the local municipality shall consider mitigation between industrial and sensitive land uses. The local municipality may consider options for mitigation in accordance with the MOE guidelines called compatibility between industrial facilities and sensitive land uses. We recognize and appreciate that there are existing residential uses in the general area and that the proposed redevelopment site is not immediately adjacent to our property. However, we believe that it is the municipality's best interest to consider how land use compatibility is being addressed by this proposal to ensure that potential adverse effects to the proposed use are minimized and mitigated. Thank you for the opportunity to provide our preliminary comments. We request that Lafarge be added to the notice list to receive further information related to these applications, including notices of decisions. We also kindly ask that you continue to notify Lafarge of any update reports and plans related to the application in order to provide comments. This letter is signed by Luke McLeod, uh, Professional Engineer Land Manager, um, on behalf of Lafarge Canada, Inc. And that concludes the correspondence. Thank you, Claire. Um, okay, that, that brings us to the point of the meeting where we open things up to, uh, to the public, those uh, and the applicant. Uh, at this time, I'm inviting any of those in attendance who are in support of the application other than the applicant to speak. Uh, Clerk Berfeltz, do you know if we have anyone who's expressed intent that way? 
So we have no indication or expression of intent there. Um, at this time, I call on com for comments from those who are in opposition to the application. For Fairfax, to your knowledge, is there anyone on this call who is in opposition to this application? Okay, so we're validating that, that we don't see that. And so at this time, uh, we can turn the uh, opportunity for comments to the applicant or the applicant's agent. I do believe the applicant is here. I'm not sure if uh, there's an agent, but um, I'll, I'll turn to the applicant first and invite the applicant, if they wish, to uh, speak to this council in this public meeting. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, this is Mr. Argoloth. Uh, I am the applicant for the owner and also a registered civil engineer in Ontario. And I guess I, I want to speak, I guess with, uh, sorry, in regards to the objections on a technical basis exactly to address, you know, the objections that they had. I guess one of the first things, I'm going back by memory here, um, was the inadequacy of the parking, uh, but there is adequate parking. These are residential units of about 400 square meters each, so they're basically apartments. So anybody in an apartment typically would not have more than one car. Um, these are not like the houses. I, I'm the developer of the residential subdivision called Hannah's Haven, you know, Adams Avenue and Hannah Avenue. Uh, near Harry Dunnigan's site on the south end of Liftville. That's my subdivision. So this is different. These are residential condominium or apartment units. So typically people are not gonna have more than one car. So, you know, I, I was assuming it's gonna be more retired people, younger people, professionals, they're not gonna have two cars. So one car parking is sufficient for each unit. And these are smaller stores on the bottom, which are similar to the stores you would see in Main Street downtown where you have the pizza pits and I don't know, Diana Suites, if you remember, that sort of thing. So they're smaller stores. So you would have one car parking typically, most of the traffic you would get in these stores is, is foot traffic. Um, as far as people backing onto Main Street, I don't know where that came from. Uh, if you look at the site plan, it's specifically designed to have 20 foot parking spaces, which are sufficient to fit a large SUV or a pickup truck. So they're over oversized parking spots as it is. And then there's about 30 feet drive aisle between the parking spots. Typically you need about 20 feet in order to back out with a pickup truck, but there's 30 feet between the drive aisle. So it's basically, it's been designed so that um, a fire truck or a garbage truck comes into, can come into the development do a three-point turn and go back out onto Main Street. So no cars will be backing out onto Main Street. <clears throat> Everything in there would be three-point turns. So there's no danger of any cars backing out onto Main Street. It's all self-contained traffic and the parking spots are over over designed essentially. They're over oversized, but I had the land so we used it for more parking. Um, that's, I guess, as far as I'm going to go on the parking. Another concern was the sanitary sewer and the water main. Now, this is Main Street Listwell. So the sanitary sewer and the water main is sufficiently sized, and that was confirmed by the city engineers. So it's not, you know, as an engineer, we can't just say, oh, we want to hook up on a sewer and a water main without checking capacity. So this has already been predetermined and discussed with the city engineers. And also there's a larger, a much larger residential development, which is gonna be proposed across um, from Hannah Hamilton on the, on the other side of the street. And that's gonna be a massive residential subdivision. So I know that there has been upgrades for the whole system in that entire area in order to accommodate the large subdivision, which is going in. So this in terms of scale is a small development on the existing system, which has already been upgraded to accommodate that large subdivision we're just going in. Uh, Sean could probably talk more on that. I forgot exactly the name of the developer who owns that subdivision. Um, but that was the sanitary. Um, now back to Lafarge. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a Campbell Soup Factory um, a few years ago when I started the subdivision and they had similar concerns. 
make a long story short, um, we had the, sa the same issues that Lafarge is bringing up, Campbell Soup brought up, when I was starting the subdivision, um, which is now successful, finished, completed subdivision with no issues with industry whatsoever, and which is Hannah Avenue, Adams Avenue, Aaron, Aaron Street, um, Armstrong and Crotch Street. You probably know the subdivision back there. It's a higher density, uh, more city oriented, but it's efficient land use. And there is absolutely no issues between industry and the subdivision. Anyway, but we went through a whole long thing with the Campbell Soup way back then. And now in order to avoid that sort of same sort of thing, now when they completed the record of site condition which is what this specifically has to be done with the Ministry of the Environment to confirm that even though there was um, commercial uses on the site in the past, essentially we have to confirm as an engineer that there is no contamination. So we have to investigate, we have to look at the land, we have to do a record of site condition. As part of that site condition for this specific site, I did note to the Ministry of the Environment that Lafarge is within a certain distance as required between sensitive land uses and commercial land uses, sorry, industrial land uses for the Ministry of the Environment guidelines. So the Ministry of the Environment is currently aware of that, that Lafarge has their industrial facility there and that this is proposed within a certain basically radial distance or vicinity of that industrial um, facility. Now, upon looking at land from an aerial view and industrial uses in vicinity of residential uses, Lafarge is currently um, an industrial use, an M2 industrial use. And if you, you probably know the area, obviously, next to Hamilton, Hannah and Hamilton, there is an existing residence to the uh, northwest of Hannah and Hamilton. And that property directly abuts against Lafarge facility. So there is zero separation, period, between the industrial land use, M2, which is Lafarge, and residential uses. And there is no objections. I mean, sir, there are no complaints to the Ministry of the Environment. There is no issues whatsoever between residential uses and industrial uses directly against each other which exist now, and they've existed for who knows how long, um, that house, as you probably know, as I said, is next to Hannah and Hamilton. In contrast, this development is quite a distance away, and it does meet the Ministry of the Environment guidelines. And as I said, this has been taken into account in the record of site condition and has been submitted to the Ministry of the Environment. So the Ministry of Environment engineers are aware of this development in proximity to the Lafarge plant. And Lafarge has what's called a certificate of approval, which was issued by the Ministry of the Environment. And it basically is a certificate that says, this industrial complex is having no adverse effect on residential properties within its vicinity. And the closest residential property to Lafarge, as I said, is right next door to Lafarge. So if Lafarge is not having an adverse effect on that residential property right next door to it, it's physically impossible for Lafarge to pollute any residences which are 200 meters away from their property line. But all of that has been put into the record of site condition and the Ministry of Environment engineers are aware of it and they're reviewing it currently. And I guess that, that's it. That's how I'm gonna address that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Argoloff. Um, at this time, uh, opportunity for counselors to ask questions or offer comments on this uh, matter in the public meeting. Council? Councilor Andres. Hi, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, upon taking a look at the plans that have been offered and also listening to some residents, 
Um, I, I agree that we need to defer this, um, the decision on this, um, and I appreciate um, Mr. Yilmaz's report. I think one of my main concerns at this time continues to be with parking. I realize that these are small units and that they're one bedroom apartments, but um, people have visitors on a regular basis. And in, in terms of supporting the businesses in the, in the front of that building, I continue to have concerns around just cars needing to park and access those, those uh, businesses. So um, those are my feelings at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Anyone else on council wanting to take this opportunity to ask questions or offer comments, given that we have the uh, applicant here? Councillor Seiler is next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. And I'd like to thank you for the correspondence that we got with this uh, application. I um, have a few concerns here. Garbage pickup is one. I um, not sure where the pickup will, will be for the apartments, where the pickup will be for the businesses. And I'd like to have a report from our fire chief on getting a fire truck turned around in there or any emergency vehicle. And snow removal is an issue for me. And parking is a big issue with, with the this development. I think that we need to take a close look at this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Seiler. Next up is Councillor Richardson. Thank you, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Uh, I too have a few concerns with this development that's coming in. Uh, number one, what Councillor Seiler had made mention of, whether it be the parking, I do have some issues with. Um, also, and I'm in agreement with deferral for this time and getting pending some of the um, uh, MOE requirements that are yet to come back. And I understand that. Uh, just a question to the applicant, if I might, um, and it could possibly be with the renderings, the exterior renderings that I'm seeing, and they, they could just be rough at this point in time. Do the balconies actually have access from the building? Because they look like it's only when there's only looks like it's only windows that come out into the balconies. Like I'm just wondering. Can people actually get out onto them? Because there's no, there doesn't appear, and I understand renderings. I'm just wondering if that's actually the case. Oh, yeah, there is definitely access. If you look, I can't point to it, um, but I can see it. There are doors and windows to each balcony, access from each residential unit. Um, there are other renderings, which I submitted. I don't know, you should have more of them, and you may be able to see them in other pictures. But if you look on the balcony, you'll see a side door. The door is not actually facing the street because it's more aesthetically pleasing. If it's off to the side, you can see a side door on each balcony. So each residential unit has an eight foot um, balcony. So four feet of it was like a, 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 rain, a rain deck. So you can sit out there during rain. And then there's a four foot sun deck, which protrudes, but absolutely every uh, a balcony has access from each unit. Yep. Thank you. Okay, supplemental and thank you. I just I just wasn't sure just because if you look at that close on the renderings, it's on page 38 of the rendering um, yep. and it's a technical issue that the window stops about a foot off the ground. If you actually right. look like the, the side window that comes in and that could just be rendering was, a window was put right. in instead of a door, right? That picture there, if you scroll There's up a little a bit, one. right the yeah, there's that a one right one. there. Page eight, I think it's page 18, if I can see it correctly. There's there's a picture of the side door. You can see it on that. Yep. Well, it just looks like there's there's a there's a heck of a step to come down. I just uh, it's it's a moot point, but uh, right. I do think that the deferral is required for that yeah. secondary comment once we get pending MOE uh, certifications on the site. So thank you for that. I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Anyone else uh, with questions or comments at this point? Okay, so uh, um, I can advise that uh, following this public meeting, North Perth Council will consider a recommendation concerning the official plan amendment, which will be sent to the Perth County Council. Uh, the Perth County Council decision will be subject to appeal to the local planning appeal tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. 
And with that, I can bring uh, our meeting, public meeting to a close. Um, Council, I believe we have a little bit of business here to uh, do so though. Uh, we have a resolution for consideration that the public meeting for the purpose of a planning act application is now adjourned at 8, 10 p.m. And that council reconvene into regular open council. Can I call on Councillor Siler to be our mover for that? Yes, I also move that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on uh, ending this public meeting and getting back to council? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Turn on the light, please. The light. Can you mute that? Thank you. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, so that brings regular council session back into uh, existence. Uh, council at this time, then we have um, a, a resolution that as you've heard has come from the staff uh, with regards to this matter. Uh, the resolution um, before I will read it into the record and have considered as moved and second, does anyone feel strongly differently about what's about to come, which is a, a resolution for deferral? Anyone want to do something different? It's your will. Okay, um, I'm not hearing or seeing anything. Um, so let's have that resolution that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth defer the application for an official plan amendment, OPA 33, and a zoning bylaw amendment affecting property described as part one of reference plan 44R 4545, part lot J of registered plan 194 670 Main Street East in the Listowel Ward. Councillor Anstead, can I call on you to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that motion, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Behrens, will you second it? Yes, I will second that motion, thank you. Thank you, any discussion, debate, further comments from anyone? We're not seeing an indication for that purpose, so let's have that vote to move and second. And we're missing one. And that is carried, thank you. Uh, so this council has deferred uh, any further action at this point. Um, I think there's some work to do there. Uh, Mr. Argolov, thank you for coming tonight and being available to us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for uh, hearing me. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, uh, let's move on then to uh, item uh, number five. Uh, it's from departments and staff. We have uh, no reports from the CEO's department tonight. Uh, as I indicated earlier, CEO Snell is on well-deserved vacation this week. Um, I hope he is uh, well and safe. Uh, next up is uh, item 5.2 then, report reports from the clerk's department. We have a few here. Uh, for item 5.2.1, council is asked to recommend approval to the County of Perth's Land Division Committee or its approved delegate of an application for consent to sever for purposes of creating one new residential lot from a farm lot currently part of a consolidated farming operation. The property is in the Wallace Ward. We'll invite planner Sean Yilmaz from the County of Perth, our beloved North Perth planner, to provide more information on this matter. Mr. Yilmaz, welcome again. Thank you again. Uh, so application B1021 submitted to the County of Perth is an application for a consent to sever a dwelling deemed surplus to a farming operation. The applicant, FNK Dairy Limited, on behalf of the property owners of the subject property, uh, Stephen and Joyce Muhlenstein, have applied for a consent to sever an existing farm dwelling, which has been deemed surplus to the needs of a future consolidated farm operation. This application for consent applies to the property located at 8436 Road 167. The consent sketch prepared by MTE and submitted with the application illustrates a proposed severed lot with a lot frontage of approximately 
120 meters or 393 feet along road 167 and a lot area of approximately 0 0.99 hectares or 2.45 acres. The proposed severed lot contains an existing farm dwelling with a pool, a storage shed wor and workshop uh, and a buried barn foundation. The dwelling is connected to an existing geothermal system located south of the house. The dwelling is proposed to remain connected with this system. However, the land will remain with the farm property, that is the retained lands, and access will be provided through an easement in favor of the surplus farm dwelling lot, that is the severed lands. This is captured through condition seven in the conditions list. The proposed retained farm lot would have a lot area of approximately 18.8 .8 hectares or 46.5 acres. Uh, and the re proposed retained farm lot contains farmland and no buildings. It is the opinion of staff that the proposed severed lot based on the sketch provided includes lands that do not have any value or importance to the dwelling and can be easily included with the farming operation as noted on this sketch, a buried barn is, low, is included with a dwelling and includes an area of approximately 0 0.27 hectares or 0 0.66 acres. If this feature were removed from the proposed severed lot, the severed lot would then have a total area of 0 0.72 hectares or 1.77 acres, which represents an area needed to accommodate the residential use and services. The reduced severed lot will have a frontage of approximately 87 meters. As such, staff is recommending that the proposed severed lot exclude the area of lands north of the dwelling and north of the shed, which contains the buried barn. This reduction was discussed with the property owner and the applicant, and they have no concerns with the condition included with the staff recommendation that will effectively capture this reduction. Uh, just to note that the submitted sketch has not yet been revised. Now, decisions on consent to sever applications must be consistent with the provincial policy statement, which states that the new lot will be limited to a minimum size needed to accommodate the use and appropriate water and sewage services, and that the planning authority ensures that new residential dwellings are prohibit prohibited on any remnant parcel of farmland created as a result of the severance. The PPS defines a residence surplus to a farming operation as an existing habitable farm residence that is rendered surplus as a result of a farm consolidation, which is the acquisition of additional farm parcels to be operated as one farm operation. Consent to sever applications must also conform to the County of Perth official plan. Section 5631 of the County OP provides criteria and, rec and requirements the County deems necessary to sever dwellings made surplus as a result of a farm consolidation. This includes, but not limited to, that the minimum distance separation provisions of MDS-1 be satisfied, that surplus farm dwelling must be a minimum of 10 years old, and that the area of land to be severed for the surplus farm dwelling lot shall be the limited size required for the residential use. The staff report uh, has explored and addressed these policies as it relates to the application and feel that the proposal is consistent with the provincial policy statement and the County of Perth official plan. The dwelling is over 10 years old and is habitable. There are no MDS issues or conflicts. Both properties are within Perth County and the size of the lot is the minimum necessary for the residential use. Staff have no objection to the proposed consent to sever uh, a surplus farm dwelling lot provided the applicant meets the 11 identified conditions provided with the recommendation. This includes that the proposed severed lot is reduced in size. Um, and that the appropriate access is provided to the geothermal system through an easement. As such, it is staff's recommendation that North Perth Council recommend that the County of Perth Land Division Committee or its, or its designate approve the application for consent to sever subject to the noted 11 conditions. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Yilmaz, the clerk and I are conferring because uh, the resolution that I have has 12 uh, 12 conditions, not 11. And so we're wondering what has happened um, in the documentation. Can you comment on whether there was a condition that was removed uh, subsequent to the preparation of the council package? Um, just give me one second. To, I just can double check here. Thank you. Go. Um, I have 11 that was 
submitted with the report. Okay. But the report that you have has 12, sorry? Or is it just the resolution? It, it, the resolution has 12. And we're yeah, seeing, my... East Ground, I think we're seeing 12 as well. So um, I'm wondering if there's a discrepancy here that we should try to figure out and fix uh, that has occurred since the publication of our meeting agenda uh, to uh, the resolution tonight. Um, perhaps the, the best way for me to do this, I mean, I, I'm, I, it's my custom to read these into the record. Um, maybe Mr. Yilmaz, you'll, you'll watch carefully as I read this into the record and uh, you can tell me if I'm reading something that shouldn't be there, is that right? Yes, for sure, absolutely. Cross reference against your document with 11 and we'll see where it takes us. Okay, um, so that's how we'll proceed from a process perspective. Uh, Councillors, first comments or questions? So, um, Deputy Clerk Beer is saying it went from two to four. I did it. Okay, so, so um, Deputy Clerk Beer, you're owning uh, this one, it seems. Uh, okay, so uh, it's 11 conditions. It's just that they're misnumbered in the resolution that we have. That's fine. I, I think I, I think I've actually know, noticed what happened here too. Um, the the um, schedule A might not have been the updated schedule, and it only. I just wanted to double check this. Um, Okay, so we I think it. Mm -hmm. Bearfelds thinks it's a numbering issue. But when I read into the record, if if you spot or hear something different, you'll you'll keep close eye, right? So, yes. so then, and uh, and we'll uh, ask for uh, any questions or comments at this point. We're not seeing anything, so it's like reading the phone book. These things at times, right? So here we go. I have a resolution for us, Council, uh, that uh, Mr. Yilmaz is carefully watching to make sure that we're not uh, doing anything odd, uh, that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth receive the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever Number B10-21 by Stephen and Joyce Muhlenstein, owner, FNK Dairy Limited Applicant, Ryan Bagnell, agent, affecting lands described as Lot 37, Concession 3, Wallace Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 8436 Road 167, dated June 14, 2021, for information. And the Council recommends that the County of Perth Land Division Committee or its designate approve the application for consent to sever number B10-21, described as Lot 37, Concession 3, Wallace Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 8436 Road 167, subject to the following conditions. One, that confirmation be received from a solicitor that the certificate of the official uh, will be scanned and attached to the electronic registration of the transfer. Two, that the county be provided with a description that is consistent with the application and equal to that required for registration of a deed transfer or other conveyance of interest in land under the provisions of the Registry Act or Land Titles Act. Two copies of registered reference plan required and an electronic file containing the digital plotting of the description under the provision of the Registry Act or Land Titles Act, including the textual description of file format, map standards used, scale and location um, as lot concession and municipality and a geo-referenced autocad.dwg format. Alternatively, the committee being provided with an order pursuant to section 150 of the Land Titles Act RSO 1990 or section 70 of the Land Registry Act RSO 1990 issued by a land registrar exempting the transfer from the requirement that a reference plan be deposited. If it has been determined that the subject property is a whole lot on an additional township plan of survey and an exemption order cannot be provided by a land registrar satisfactory proof of same shall be provided by a solicitor with confirmation stating the reason why an exemption order cannot be provided. Here's where our numbering jumps off the deep end. It's number four next, uh, Mr. Yilmaz. I think we want this one to be number three, right? That confirmation be received from the property owner that the property owner has entered into an agreement with the County of Perth to prohibit any new permanent residential dwellings on the lot, retained farm lot. Four, confirmation be received by the County of uh, Perth County, sorry, by the Perth County Land Division Committee Secretary Treasurer that the notice sign and sign frame posted on the subject property have been returned to the issuing municipality within 30 days of the decision of the Land Division Committee. If the notice sign is not returned, 
Confirmation must be received that a replacement sign fee of $100 has been paid to the issuing municipality prior to the final consent approval. Five, that the severed lot be reduced in size from approximately 9,960 square meters or 0.99 hectares, 2.45 acres, as indicated on the application sketch dated February 25th, 2021, to be approximately 7,212 square meters, 0.72 hectares, 1.77 acres, size for a total reduction in area of approximately 2,748 square meters, or 0.27 hectares, 0.66 acres. The area to be excluded from the severed lot uh, contains a buried barn, which does not contribute to the minimum size required for the residential use and to accommodate services. Uh, six, that an undertaking be received from a solicitor stating that the retained farm parcel be sold to the proposed buyers, FFK Dairy Limited, as the existing farm dwelling is surplus to their needs. Seven, that an easement be registered on title of the retained farm lot in favor of a severed lot as it concerns access to and maintenance of an existing geothermal system serving the severed lot. Eight, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perk that all financial requirements have been met, if any. Uh, nine, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that all taxes have been paid in full. Ten, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that the apportionment schedule for this drains in this area be reviewed and updated if necessary to the satisfaction of the municipality of North Perth in accordance with section 65.1 of the Drainage Act R. So show that the applicant will be responsible for all costs associated with this reapportionment and 11 that confirmation be received from the municipality of north perth that an amendment to the municipality of north perth's implementing zoning bylaw has been adopted to zone the proposed severed lot to permit only a dwelling and accessory uses buildings and structures that is driveway attached garage swimming pool a home occupation and a bread bed and breakfast establishment and to zone the retained farm lot to prevent any new permanent residential dwellings Mr. Yilmaz, is that, I count 11 now, is that right? That is correct, yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Johnston, don't be a smart aleck at this point, please. Um, I, I know you're twitching to ask me to read it again, and I might just turn it over to you if you try. Uh, so let's go with uh, Councillor Johnston. Will you serve as our mover for this? No, I'm not in favor of this, Mr. Mayor, so I wouldn't move it. All right, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our mover? I will move that, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? I'll second the motion, yes. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate at this time? Fair thoughts, are we seeing anything? We're not seeing anything. Uh, okay, duly moved and seconded, uh, right into the record. Let's have that vote. Councillor Andreessen, we're not seeing your vote. Yes, I'm in favor. My vote didn't come up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that vote, uh, that matter is carried. Eight to one. Thank you. Uh, next up then is item 5.2.2. Council is asked to adjust the naming of streets that are to be developed in the now under construction Dalmish subdivision in Atwood. And I'm going to call, I think, on the clerk to address this matter. Let me just set the AV settings right here. And Council, as per the report pre prepared by Deputy Clerk Danette Beer, North Perth Council did adopt a bylaw authorizing the signing of a subdivision agreement back in May of uh, 2021. As staff were moving forward with registration, it was identified that two of the street names are now going would now be repeated, and so therefore we went back to the developer, asking them to relook at the names and come up with some suggestions for North Perth Council. As you know, in our naming policy, um, Council can entertain a 50-50% on the use of the name policy and other names. 
and tonight before you, there is recommendation through the developer, developer sorry, that McKeever would then become Goodyear Street based on the policy and that William Street would become Cheryl Avenue as per the request of the developer. Be happy to answer any questions if council has any. Thank you, Clerk Perfeltz. Uh, any questions or comments from council on this matter before we consider the resolution? Okay, we're not seeing any, so let's uh, consider a resolution here that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves the request from Dalmich Holdings Limited to rename two streets on the draft plan as follows. Uh, one, William Street to Cheryl Avenue, and two, McKeever Street to Goodyear Street. And further, that Schedule H to the subdivision agreement between Dalmich Holdings Limited and the Municipality of North Perth be amended to reflect this change. Uh, Councillor Duncan, would you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I will move that. Thank you. Councillor Johnston, will you second this one? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, next up, then, uh, we have item 5.2.3. Council is invited to con concur with an application from ExploreNet to erect a communication broadcasting tower on private lands in Wallace Ward, the municipality of North Perth. This is to support various commercial purposes of ExploreNet. I'll ask Mr. Yilmaz, I believe, the, the North Perth planner with the County of Perth for his orientation to this matter. Mr. Yilmaz. Yes, thank you. Uh, so. Jacqueline Johnson of Tango, Tango Networks Incorporated on behalf of ExploreNet Communications Incorporated have requested a letter of concurrence from the Municipality of North Perth in an effort to complete the required consultation process in support of a proposed 45 meter communications tower located at 5098 Perth Line 86 uh, east of Listowel. As a result of the municipal, as a, as a result, the municipality has requested a letter of undertaking between the proponent and the municipality. The proposed installation is a light duty self support style communication structure. The tower, the tower installation is a triangular system, which will be 45 meters in height and occupy a footprint of approximately three meters by three meters. Uh, the federal government regulates communication facilities through industry Canada and are not subject to municipal or provincial planning approvals. Uh, additional regulatory authorities include the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission, NAV Canada and Transport Canada. Um, the applicant has provided, or excuse me, has proceeded with a public circulation and consultation, which was undertaken in accordance with the default ID public consultation process found in the CPC 2003 Radio Communication and Broadcasting Antenna Systems document. Information brochures, brochures were sent to the immediate neighbors of the proposed site, and a newspaper posting was included in the Listuo banner on April 29, 2021. No public comment or concern was received to date. Uh, as such, staff have no concerns pertaining to the consultation process with the proposal and acknowledge that the conclusion of the consultation procedures, as such, staff is recommending council concur uh, with the resolution and enter into a letter of undertaking. Thank you. Council, any questions on this matter? Uh, Mr. Yilmaz, I don't know if it's our place at this point to ask this question, but uh, have they given any indication as to the number of residences that, or facilities that might be serviced by this tower and any indication of um, uh, sort of upload and download capabilities that they're expecting with this? Um, I, to, to be honest, I have not seen or heard any of that type of information in any of the documents that I've received. Okay. Um, uh, let's uh, have the resolution then. Uh, the resolution uh, reads as follows, um, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth concur that the proposal by ExploreNet Communications Inc. to erect a communication tower installation on lands known as part lot three concession one as in r317 6526 
5098 Hearth Line 86 Wallace Ward is fully compliant in the municipality's opinion with the requirements of Industry Canada's radio communications and broadcasting antenna systems protocol CPC-2-0-03 and all obligations for the municipality and public consultation requirements the CPC have been satisfactorily met. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as a seconder? I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thanks. Council, any discussion or debate? Council, I do want to offer a comment on these two applications, and it's just, um, uh, it's, it's a vague possibility, uh, but I think it's important for us to understand. Uh, certainly, uh, there must be enthusiasm for the fact that um, this could start to bridge some of our broadband issues in North Perth. At the same time, uh, without a full understanding of the upload and download speeds, um, it is entirely possible that with this uh, installation, uh, this will deem all of Wallace Township and all of the Trowbridge part of Elma as appropriately served with broadband. And that could lock us out from additional funding from the federal government when it, and the provincial government when they announced their approach to broadband. Uh, and fiber in particular. So there is um, benefits, but there's also potentially a risk that this uh, could affect future fiber projects in our community and the government could deem that uh, we're not eligible for additional funding for fiber because the job has been done, even if it's been done uh, well below the, the one gig standard of um, fiber, which could be brought to our community potentially. So I just want council to understand that I'm not sure that it influences uh, in particular, this resolution, but it's important to understand that there are risks that are emerging um, to a, a fiber future and that we should be fully aware of. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Um, we have a similar request uh, to be undertaken, as I understand it, uh, near the hamlet of Trowbridge. Uh, council was invited again to concur with an application for from ExploreNet to erect a communication broadcasting tower on private lands, and um, this is to support their their purposes. Uh, Mr. Yilmaz, anything different or notable about this one compared to the first? Uh, yeah. So. Thank you. Um, it is very similar in nature as the first one. Same tower, um, same height. However, located at 6557, line 81. Um, one other, I guess, notable uh, piece of information was that one member of the public did note some concerns. Um, and the proponent subsequently responded to these concerns. The letter um, and the response are contained within the consultation concurrence report. Um, I, I'm not sure if, and this is just an oversight, but I'm not sure if I, if I got that concurrence report to council um, to actually see the comment. Um, and if I didn't, I most certainly will send it to, to council. Um, but the, it was addressed under CPC section 422. The proponent is required to respond to all reasonable and relevant concerns during the 30-day notification period, um, which they have done. So at this point, staff have no concerns pertaining to the consultation process uh, associated with the proposal and acknowledges the conclusion of the consultation procedures. As such, staff is recommending that council concur uh, with the resolution and enter into a letter of undertaking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yomaz. Any questions or comments from council on this one? Seeing none, we have a resolution that is pretty much the mirror of the last. It reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth concur that the proposal by Explorative Communications Inc. to erect a communication tower uh, installation on lands known as Lot 4, Concession 4, 6557, Line 81, Elma Ward, is fully compliant in the municipality's opinion with the requirements of Industry Canada's radio communications and broadcasting antenna systems protocol CPC-2-0-03 
and all obligations for the municipality and public consultation requirements, the CPC, have been satisfactorily met. Um, Councillor Anstead, can I call on you to move that one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Okay, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. And I think that moves us past 5.2. The clerk's department, that brings us to item 5.3, reports and programs department. We don't have any tonight, but I know that they are working hard on uh, setting up programs and opportunities for uh, the beautiful weather that's emerging this spring and into the summer months. So we invite them to carry on. Uh, for item 5.4, uh, reports from the manager of facilities and the facilities department. As item 5.4.1, we have a recommendation from staff to reduce per player fees charged for um, the reductions in available use uh, time at various sports fields in the municipality of North Earth. These reductions re reflect uh, use restrictions that are or are expected to be in place, again, related to the pandemic. And I'm gonna call on Mr. Newell our manager of facilities to outline the relevant information and provide any recommendations. Welcome, Mr. Newell. Good evening, Mayor and members of council. Uh, before you is a report regarding the per player fees for minor sports organizations and a reduction in the charge to uh, young people playing sports due to the COVID-19 and the season being shortened. Um, we are anticipating that Registrations will be low um, compared to 2019 registration numbers. And uh, as a result, we're trying to encourage participation in sports. So we would like to reduce the fees to reflect a percentage of the season that would be remaining to them, seeing as May and June will for all intents and purposes be gone uh, due to the COVID-19. So we're looking at a reduction of fees from $31 to $20. Um, if we were to see the same registration numbers that we would have had in 2019, it would be an approximate decrease of $6,721 in anticipated revenue um, for the minor ball. Now this is a per participant fee. Um, since this report was written, we've had uh, a request come in from adult co-ed soccer uh, to look at adjusting their fees for the season. Um, again, their season is shortened and they would normally pay $232 plus HST for a season. Um, we're recommending that because they would only have three to five games left in the season, that the rate would be $150 plus HST. Um, so with that being said, the recommendation uh, would need to be revised because we hadn't uh, made note of the fact that the adult soccer was in, interested in also having their fees reduced. So the revised resolution would read that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth reduced the per player rate for the 2021 summer sports season to $20 per player and the adult soccer fee to $150 per season due to the reduced usage of sports fields during provincial COVID-19 orders. If there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer. Thanks, Mr. Newell. Um, questions or first comments from council on this matter? Councillor Anstead first. Thanks, Mark Kastenberg, through you. And thanks very much, Jeff, for the report. I'm just wondering if you could briefly touch on the conversations that were had with uh, Minor Ball. Have they been made aware of these numbers and what was their response to the proposed numbers? Thank you. At this point, there hasn't been a conversation uh, with them what the reduced rate would be. Um, to my knowledge, anyhow, we may have had some staff that looks after our bookings had conversations with them, but I have not had conversations. Our hope is uh, that the reduction in fees would increase their participation if people look at it and see that their child could have 
participation for $20 for the remainder of the season, it might be seen as a very affordable option and encourage participation. However, we don't have a feeling for sure if all seasons uh, or if there will be a season of any kind put forth by minor ball at this point. So we're not, not sure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or first comments? Okay, I have a resolution for our consideration that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of Perth reduced the per player rate for the 2021 summer sports season to $20 per player and the adult soccer fee to $150 per season due to the reduced usage of sports fields during provincial COVID-19 orders. Councillor Duncan, would you serve as our mover for that? I most certainly will move that. Thank you. Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Definitely. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Okay. Councillor Anstett, do you want to go again? Yes, thanks very much, Mayor Kasenberger. Through you. I'm just wondering if it would be a possibility, depending on how restrictions loosen and how the season unfolds, is there a possibility that this can be reviewed at a later date? I mean, my concern is we don't know at all if there's even going to be a season or what that would look like. So I'm just wondering, I would be more comfortable if we have the option to review this later on as well. Okay, um, did you want to suggest a, uh, an amendment to the, uh, the, the resolution that's on the floor at this point then, uh, Neil? Yes, I would. Um, and I'm just, in terms of what, it would, what I would say, I'm just concerned again that as of right now, we don't know. I know there was an announcement today from the provincial government, um, but I'm just still concerned that we still don't have a definitive answer as to when these, um, when the minor ball or those sorts of activities might resume. So if we could, uh, I would suggest an amendment, something along the lines of to be reviewed in approximately one month's time. Is that reasonable? Or should we just say review as changes emerge in the landscape? And I'd be fine with that as well. As, as identified by staff kind of thing? Sure. Okay. Um, all right, so Councillor Anstead is proposing an amendment um, uh, to the resolution that's on the floor. Um, are, is there someone willing to second that? Uh, let's see here. Um, where are we in my list? Councillor Richardson, are you willing to second that one? I will second that. Thank okay. you. Okay. There we go. So uh, we have a seconder. Uh, we have a mover for that one. Uh, thank you. Um, any discussion or debate on the amendment? So this is uh, council review. This is changes emerge in the landscape uh, as brought to attention by staff. Okay. So uh, a little bit procedural here, but uh, first we need to vote on the amendment. Um, I don't know, Deputy Clerk Beer, do you have something for us? It looks like you might have. So let's have the vote on the amendment, councillors. Councillor Andreessen here, I'm in favor. I'm having some troubles with my screen right now. Thank you. Okay, so that's carried, thank you. So our new uh, resolution reads as follows. That there's something like this anyway. The Council of Municipality of North Perth reduced the per player rate for the 2021 sport, summer sports season to $20 per player and the adult soccer fee to $150 per season due to the reduced usage of sports fields during provincial COVID-19 orders and further that Council review this as changes emerge in the landscape uh, as brought to attention by staff. Um, that is uh, duly moved and seconded. Any discussion or debate on that full uh, resolution now? All right, uh, we're not seeing any indication of that, so let's have that vote and get that wrapped up. Councillor Andreessen here, I'm in favor. Okay, thanks. So with that, that's carried, thank you. And uh, I guess that brings us to the end of that. Uh, Mr. Newell, thank you so much. Uh, nice to have you. you speaking at our council meeting and uh, we look forward to many more good reports. Um, we have no reports originating from our finance, environmental services, operations, or fire departments this evening. Rest assured, they are all laboring diligently on our behalf. That allows us to move down to item six of our agenda at this time. Uh, council, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or committees to request an opportunity to do so? 
uh, please let us know in the chat function of our web conference tool. Okay, we're not seeing anything there, so uh, that allows us to move on to item seven. We have received two items of correspondence that staff has advised warrants some action. Uh, first up is um, a request from the Listful Agricultural Society to close Tremaine Avenue South from Maine to Clayton to support their efforts to execute a fireworks show on July 16th in association with the Listful Agricultural Fair. Staff has prepared a draft to support our, our consideration here that reads as follows. If the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approves the request from the Listful Agricultural Society to close Tremaine Avenue South from Main Street East to Clayton Street East on July 16th, 2021 from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. and further that North Perth Public Works fire OPP and Perth County EMS will be notified. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for that? Yes, I will. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Fireworks, hooray. We all like fireworks. Um, all right. So uh, any discussion or debate besides the mayor's wry comments about fireworks? All right. It reminds me of my grandmother, Council. My grandmother and I got to watch fireworks at the International Firework Competition in Montreal when I was a student at McGill. And, it was a very special experience. So, um, all right. Um, this is about road closing for those fireworks. Uh, let's have that vote. And Councillor Andreessen, what, we cannot vote because she's uh, abstaining because of the Agriculture Society connection. So that's carried. Thank you. Uh, next up then is uh, item 7.2. We have a request from the Agricultural Society to erect signs related to a physically distanced rules abiding car and agricultural vehicle rally. Uh, the signs are expected to be installed beginning June 25th and uh, will be showing until July 16th, which coincides with the agricultural fair. Staff has prepared a draft resolution. I'm just hoping these signs are not uh, the size of the signs that are going on the buildings. Um, only uh, anytime soon. Um, election sign size, the clerk advises. There we go, we know the answer to that now. Any uh, questions or comments about this request before I bring the resolution to the table council? All right, so I have the resolution that the council of the municipality of North Perth approves the request from the list of agricultural society to erect signs on municipal power property for a car rally from June 25th to July 16th, 2021. And can I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for that? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Will you do the seconding honors? I sure will. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried again uh, with Councillor Andreessen abstaining for declared uh, interest. Um, at this point, so uh, that brings us to agenda no item number eight, uh, which allows Council to consider and enact bylaws. Uh, we have a bylaw here tonight for our consideration relating to a, the signing of a licensing agreement with a number of company. And um, I think I'm gonna ask the clerk for comment. Uh, Oh, okay. Great. Mr. Hackett apparently is going to be our guest uh, commentator on this one. Uh, Mr. Hackett, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Yes, back in January of 2020, Council gave direction to staff to enter into separate negotiations with uh, neighboring properties of the Listowel landfill, that being Dunnigan's Haulage and Listowel Golf Course, and that was for groundwater rights. Uh, agreement and that was part of uh, a remedial action plan that was required by the Ministry of Environment at the time. So um, an agreement with Dunnigan's was approved at the July 20th meeting of council um, by bylaw and 
I now have before you the agreement with the golf course, and it is complete and is waiting approval tonight through by through this bylaw. Uh, there were a few amendments to what was originally sent out in the package, so if, uh, if council would bear with me, I'll just go through a couple of them, or all of them, but there's only a few. Um, and the pack can go to um, page two. Uh, and again, these are mostly administrative in detail uh, in nature and um, just a bit of clarification. So under the golf course lands um, definition, there was just an extra zero in the pin number. So that's been corrected on page um, three, 2.1B. Um, there's just again, clarification clarification in the wording uh, regarding the withdrawal of groundwater from the monitoring wells, and that's been changed. Um, also on the next page, page four under D, um, it has again with written consent from the from North Perth, basically if uh, we, we would ask for any additional wells to be um, added to the golf course lands, which we're hoping we have no need to do. Um, 3.2 on the next page, there's a bit of clarification regarding indemnification and harmless for any cost or damages as a result of the agreement. That wording was just changed. Um, I would also note on Article 4, 4.1, the fee of $790 is what we um, council had proposed at the time, and that was accepted, and that would be paid out uh, annually for the next 10 years. And finally, 5.2 at the bottom of the page there, uh, of page five, was just um, a request, a written request by, for any um, results of the monitoring tests that are going on. And that was it. Um, it's very similar to the agreement that was approved from uh, for Dunnigan's property. And now the two agreements are complete. Uh, we can close, that was the last action that was required on a remedial action plan. I could take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. I'm grateful that you're careful with zeros. That's uh, important. <laughs> Um, uh, Council, any uh, questions or first comments? We're not seeing any, so I have a uh, bylaw resolution that allows us to proceed with the execution of a license agreement. It reads as follows, the bylaw number 69-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a license agreement with 215-1738 Ontario, Inc. be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed the said bylaw by signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for this one. Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as second here? I will second that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate, Councillors? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, that allows us to move along to agenda item number nine. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? Clerk Fairfax, nothing. Okay, so that allows us to move on to agenda item number 10 for our 2.1. Are there any announcements that would be a benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? If you'd like to speak, please so indicate in the web chat window. I think I will. I unilaterally call on Councillor Rothwell to give us a brief update on the wedding. Where did it go, Councillor Rothwell? Yes, thanks, Mayor Todd. Uh, the uh, proud uh, father of the brides. Uh, we had a wonderful drive-in uh, event up in uh, Roxeter on a farm uh, of our uh, son-in-law's parent. Uh, the weather uh, held, it, uh, the sun came out uh, from time to time and uh, the uh, couple are married and on their honeymoon up in the uh, uh, Halberton area. So they're having a wonderful time. So thanks very much. And uh, there'll be a picture or two shared on, on uh, and maybe already on social media because I'm not uh, quite as adept uh, at getting things on as quick, but I'll share it uh, there. But uh, thanks very much for well wishes of uh, fellow councillors. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with announcements that uh, reflect well on community at this time? Clerk Fairfax. Uh, there are a few things I'll draw to the community's attention. Uh, teddy bear activities continue this week. 
Um, in fact, I think it's a reasonably intensified week for the teddy bear uh, um, activities in town. So uh, please, if you haven't yet checked that out, uh, get involved as you can. As well, the uh, Mayor's Craft Float Parade for July 1st. Uh, our deadline, our first deadline, okay, flexible about it, is uh, the end of this week. So if you haven't built your float and taken photos or video of it, um, please uh, follow up on the website. There's information there for that float. And uh, certainly uh, we are planning, uh, we are seeing the planning for Canada Day uh, occurring uh, in Atwood as is um, fairly usual in our community and looking forward to uh, what will happen there. Anyone else with announcements? All right, that brings us to agenda item number 11. Uh, we have nothing to uh, address in a closed session meeting of council this evening, which means we can skip past agenda item number 12 because there's nothing to report uh, out from a meeting that didn't exist. Uh, that allows us to move to item 13. Council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft of that that reads as follows. The bylaw number 71-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read at first, second, and third time and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Rothwell, can I call on you to be our mover for that? You bet. Yes. Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our secondary? I certainly will. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on the confirmatory bylaw? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And we're missing one. And that will be Leanne. And she's not voting because she's declared a crumpet. So that is very beautiful. Good thing that I'm catching up here. And uh, councillors, that means we have completed the deliberation and taking action on the business that came from before us this evening. I have a motion to adjourn, which reads as follows. That this council meeting adjourns at 9.01 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, June 21st, 2021 at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Councillor Anstead, will you serve as our secondary? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. That's not debatable, so let's have that vote. And with that, that is carried. Council, uh, this uh, meeting is adjourned, and we will meet again in our next regular session. And using these technologies on Monday, June 21st, 2021. Have a great week, great night. Get your teddy bears out there. Get your floats out there. Good night, everyone.